Welcome back, Stephanie Summers. Um, I, I I heard you mention earlier that uh, your customers become friends, your clients become friends, and that told me something. Here I am smacking my microphone um, because I know some some realtors again where their clients once they did the deal, the last thing they were ever going to do is deal with that person again. So somehow you've got the magic sauce where you turn your clients into friends. And I, I'm thinking that's awesome because, you know, not only have you gained a friend, but you've gained somebody who's going to call you again five years from now. They're going to refer grandma to you and cousins, uncles, brother-in-law. So what's your magic sauce? How do you do that? What's your approach that causes you to turn clients into friends? I think I'm just lucky and get great clients. <laughs> 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 I think I'm lucky that they choose me as a friend. Um, I really take on every single person. I think this is how we need to look at real estate. We can see it as this is a transaction I need to finish. Mm -hmm. And it's a transaction and keep. And we need to look at everything logically. But at the same time, everything we do as realtors impacts people. It's one of the biggest decisions of their lives. Um, Kenny Parcell likes to say, you know, doctors take care of you and they send you home. We're, we're realtors, we bring you home. And that's nice. where, yeah, I love it. Because that is what we do. And when people are buying a home, selling a home, it's a life decision. Are they downsizing to be in their family? Are they upsizing to bring elderly parents home? Um, are they up, you know, are they adopting? Do they have children moving away? Are they moving cross country? Um, are they, you know, what is their situation? And feel how we would how we would be in that situation you know all of us have moved at some point in our lives and just the uncertainty that comes with that where they're setting up utilities finding schools finding daycare you know jobs my kids a wrestler you know we want to go to a school that's got great wrestling programs that sort of thing so trying to make a good fit for that family and going that extra mile and i don't always know the answers for everything for my clients but i will always try to get them I think if they know where your heart's coming from, that's probably better than having the answers yeah. anyway. Yeah, and they know that I will that I'll try to get it, and I will do everything I can for them. But at the end of the day, I may not have every bit of information for them. There may be bumps along the way, but I'm there with them. Mm -hmm. um, I also have events, so I have an opportunity to interact with my clients one on one outside of a real estate setting, where I never even bring up real estate, never. You know, that, that's something that I was going to ask you is uh, one of the stories I, I did with the, uh, the guy that's the marketer as part of the CE training. Uh, he's a football player. And uh, one of the raps, and I don't know if it's true or false, but it was the story that was being permeated is one of the reasons why his coach is no longer, or why he didn't succeed is because after the players graduated, he was done with them. And again, I don't know if that's true or false, but that's what is being said. And it was a golden opportunity for me. Um, you probably remember the Covey kid who played for the U. Fast. And he destroyed Team Blue. <laughs> <laughs> and he would have gone to Team Blue if, uh, if, and again, this is the story. I don't know if it's true or false, but he would have gone to Team Blue if, if he would have been remembered after he graduated. Right. So that was my question to you, is how do you keep in touch with these sorts of people? I'm not fabulous about a touch system, like we're taught to do. We're told that 33 touches in a year is the, num the magic number. That's I'm a not, lot of touches. It is, and you can do email or you know regular mail. I'm not fabulous about that. Um, but I have a few big events. I do an Easter egg hunt, which is probably my best event. Uh -huh. Really inexpensive. But each year, I mean, I've got a core of probably 12 families that come every year. And then I get my new clients that come and kids that get older so those families don't come. But it's a great no-pressure situation where I can talk to each family while we're waiting for the egg hunt to start, mm -hmm. answer questions. We just did it this week, and we have two people who are ready to sell their homes and someone else that's ready to buy another one. So no pressure. Um, we do a swimming party in the summer. Nice. Yeah, we do a breakfast with Santa. 
Nice. Just like very low key things that are for families. I'm looking for things that are, you know, just more adult oriented. Uh -huh. But I know me having kids, um, it's easier for me to bring my kids so I have them and it's time that we're together versus they're with a sitter, you know, for three more hours while I go do something else. So I, I try to include everybody and I think that my clients appreciate that. Yeah, that makes that makes sense to me. Uh, my background in that category is I would walk into a, a realtor office and I quickly learned that if I talked about anything other than home inspections, everybody was willing to talk to me. Yeah. And as soon as I went into, I am awesome, I am better than, I this, I that, yeah. they were looking at their watches and indicating they were done talking yeah. to me. Because people like to talk about themselves. Right. They don't want to hear how great you are. They want right. to know how great they are. That's right. So, you know, and if you tell them, hey, your home's gone up. This is fabulous. You know, let's, you know, is it still working for you? Maybe we want to look for something else. I didn't have to have that conversation. I had people asking me, how much is my house worth? Do you think we can, you know, get a bigger house now that our kids are growing more? So, but it, it's caring about other people, you know, more than yourself. But I have people who say, you know, how are your kids? Well, go be with your kids now. Because they know I spend time with them and look at their families. And I know their families are important that they respect that I have kids as well. Yeah. Cool. And that, that sounds to me like they respect you. And it sounds to me, too, like once they tell you that, it's kind of like saying, you've got my next job. You know, when, when I'm ready, you're already hired. You always hope so. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. It's, it sounds like they're just trying to appreciate you without saying so. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Well, that, I think, is a win. Thank you, Stephanie. You bet. Thank you.